Hey everyone, today we are taking a trip to Lake Shasta in Northern California. We're gonna take a look at how low the lake levels are and we're hoping to see a few abandoned train tunnels which are usually underwater. I'm heading to one right now and I'm hoping to find the other. Just take a look at this area. A good amount of the forest has burned down. It's very scraggly, having trouble growing back because it's been in a drought around here for almost two decades now and the last few years have been the worst. Widespread fires. A lot of times it's just a grass fire on the forest floor, but it girdles everything. That's why you see all the forest standing dead. We're about to come up to Lake Shasta in just a couple more miles, and I'll show you some cool abandoned train tunnels. Here's a pretty cool railroad. That's still active. Wow. The entire lake is dry. We can't see any water except a stream going into it. Now we're about to go and meet the active railroad. We're going to come up to the abandoned stuff pretty soon where the railroad used to be routed through before they flooded the lake in the 40s. All right, everyone, we're about to go over a bridge and we're supposed to be able to see the train tunnel from here. Hopefully. Should be around here. All right, everyone, we just made it to Shasta Lake and take a look at how low it is. Today, it's 147 feet below capacity. So low, see that boat dock behind me? That's supposed to be all the way up here. All right, everyone. So on a normal year, all these boat docks are supposed to be up here. But that hasn't been like that in a while. Just take a look at some of these bushes growing down here. Hasn't been there in a while. But every year, these tunnels, during the rainy season, they've been going back underwater. But the past couple years, they've been visible. A couple times in the past decade, too. See that active railroad bridge over there? Right here is where we're going to be going today. The abandoned tunnel, built in 1884 and then flooded in 1948 when they filled Shasta Lake. On a typical year, look how far underwater that would be, the water lines on that bridge. We're gonna try to go over there. We can walk there from right here, but first I'm gonna see if I can drive down there. You see all those roads right there? People have made a lot of good roads in these empty reservoirs to get much closer to the water. And in most cases, it's allowed. You're allowed to drive down there as long as you are capable of not getting stuck. Yeah, most of these reservoirs currently, you are allowed to drive into them as long as you got a capable vehicle. But most of these roads, they look pretty nice. It's not like we're off-roading, like just down one of these hills. You see, you can even see a ledge down there below the water line. Not much water here. When we drove in, you couldn't see any sitting water like this. It was just the river feeding it. All right, this road is very, very bumpy. So many potholes in this road. Definitely couldn't go down this with a short car. You'd bottom out on some of these big bumps. So it looks like there's a parking lot with a trail going down there. They even built stairs. But if we go forward, it looks like we might be able to just drive down to the tunnel. Not seeing a gate yet, which is a good thing. Yep, it looks like we can go right down to the tunnel somehow. I'm sure one of these roads gets down there. It's just a few twisties. Gotta take it easy. It's very bumpy. Some big rocks in the road. But now it looks like it's smooth sailing. Hope I went the right way. There was another way down. So here we are underneath the active railroad bridge. 
we turn here, going down this steep hill. Yep, this is the road to the tunnel, it looks like. It's very slanty, this road. Yep, it's smooth, just like I thought it was gonna be. I didn't know what the top was gonna be like. You see over there, that's where I was just parked, showing from far away. Yeah, we can drive right up to this tunnel. We got real good access. All right, um, I'm not taking it down here, but it's only like a 50 foot walk. I'm just gonna back up and go on foot from here. I don't feel right about going down there. So we're just gonna park it here off to the side a bit. All right, everyone. We're walking down now. The place I didn't want to take the vehicle, because look what I'm walking on. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get back up this. Thought I might spin out. It's steep, and it's very loose, very dry. I'm making a cloud out of nothing. This place is so extremely dry. It looks like this reservoir has even made itself a new bathtub ring of where it more typically is. I think this is amazing. Look at this dust. It's not too often when you see dust that fine. Somebody's made a fire pit down here. And there is the awesome railroad tunnel. Obviously the tunnel doesn't look very tall. There's probably a good 10 feet of sediment here before you'd be down to the railroad tracks. So much silt has built up over the years of this reservoir being here. And you see all these crevices where the streams come in to feed it. The majority of those small streams are dried up. Only a couple of the larger ones are flowing. And you can see, it looks like some people have been crazy enough to bring their vehicle in there. We'll check that out in just a moment. Just want to see what's around the bend. See if we can see the end of the pooling water where it's actually trickling. Looks like somebody here spun out a bit, probably during the rainstorms a couple weeks ago. Today the air temperature is only 67, but it feels very hot. Might be someone fishing around the corner here. All right, everyone, I just spoke to two men who were in that truck and they were very helpful. They were also here exploring this and they were able to give me some good information. All right, we're about to go and start walking through this tunnel. They said there should be nothing more than just a few mountains that you can definitely walk over. From what I'm already seeing in there, it looks like a very big mound. Oh, wow. That's really nice. This tunnel seems so small because there's so much sediment in here. Because there's probably maybe another 10 feet below this floor before you'd get down to where the rails would be. That's one really big collapse. Look at the amount of people who have carved their names right into the wall. And look at the amount of sediment that's outside the lake. 
It looks like current going by, maybe landslides slowly over the years filling it in, but it didn't all wash into here. You can see right there must have been a more recent landslide, making that little bit of debris pile there. It's mostly rocks just slowly sliding in. Now this is a really big collapse, and you can tell it's pretty recent too. Oh, but the guy is definitely right. There's a trail right up and over it. I've seen some other people make videos of this place and they did not venture over the pile. He said that it's a good time to definitely come out here and photograph this while you can because with better management of the lake, it's not going to be hitting the levels it did last year. Meaning a couple of the tunnels we're going to go visit after this. We'll see them, but they're not low enough to walk through. Whoa. That must have been some major collapse. Look at this. It ripped a whole new hole to the surface. Wow, don't want to be touching these rocks or standing here. It's not a very echoey place, so I'm not worried about my loud voice triggering another collapse. A lot of times these things happen, especially when it's just coming out of the water. Freeze and thaw cycles also cause that. Because I know this area does get a good amount of snow still. Yeah, so look at the tunnel. Barely any of it showing. It's such a shallow tunnel. I bet today's builders never would have done this. They would have just blasted down the mountain. And made it into a shelf along the edge of the river. Probably the most shallow train tunnel I've ever been in. And look at this, another big collapse up to the surface. It's incredible. You see how it's kind of muddy in here? It looks like water pooled in here for a while before eventually sinking into the ground and evaporating. Now we're about to go up and over another mound that collapsed from the surface. And look at that big boulder right there, ready to roll in here. Okay, I can see the train bridge right up there. And this big boulder, that thing could just roll in here and crush me. It's scary how this just collapsed like this. These walls are not that stable. It's mostly shale, which can just shatter into nothing. So here we are coming out the other side of the tunnel. The majority of the stuff you see has just been crumbling down the hill ever since it was abandoned and sent underwater. But right here, back when it was a railroad, we would be standing probably 10 feet further down to make enough room clearance for the train and this would have been the grade of the track obviously not slanted that's from years and years of small rock slides the edge is slowly caving in it being underwater we can definitely see some remnants right there yep that was something so you don't have to go through the tunnel to get here. You can just simply walk around where that truck was parked. It's very simple. Now, supposedly there's a wreck in the water, a derailment that's still here. The water's low enough currently. You can see it's sticking out of the water. That's what we're gonna go try to find. Now we finally made it to the point where the reservoir is no longer pooling. We can see some current.
the birds are loving these big mud bars. Probably lots of worms and creatures to eat. Right here is a great example of why there's probably a good 20 degree slope or so on this grade of tracks. As they raise the water up, this was all dirt from the old forest. They probably logged the trees out of the way of the reservoir and then flooded it. As the water level went up, it kept splashing against the ground, eroding all the soil, leaving nothing but rocks. As it eroded, it settled down here, making this slope. And over the years, also a whole bunch of these rocks rolled down here, not being held together anymore by the soil and trees. Wow, we're 147 feet below capacity. All right, we can already see some of the wreckage of the train derailment. This ground's not very stable, these rocks on. Yep. Here is a wheel of the train, right there. And you can even still read some of the writing on it. You can see the whole axle there. Oh, there's the other wheel. Which way is this facing? the other end down here or the other direction I'm thinking it's the other direction just imagine this in the 1940s before this was filled the train ran right here on this shelf right alongside this river now it's up there if this lake was at capacity, that would not be a scary trestle. It would be sitting right on top of the water. So I'm guessing it's laying long like this, and it's just, it's just buried in the mud. Can't see anything else of the derailment. You see a bunch of twisted metal sticking out of the ground. There's other metal posts sticking out of the ground that could have been part of that rail car. See a whole bunch of raccoon tracks down here also. I love to see these layers in the ground. Finally. Good view where the bridge is blocking the sun. We're gonna make our way back through this tunnel now. All right, we're going back into the tunnel. It's amazing how there's very little spray paint graffiti. It's all curved into the walls. This is awesome in here. Someone dumped the couch cushion in here. All right, this time to be different. We're not gonna go through the concrete section. Instead, we're gonna climb out of this hole of the collapse. There is a trail here. Instead of going back through here, we're gonna go up through the top.
Hopefully not a mistake. It's pretty grown in here. These plants aren't that bad. I walked through a bunch of annoying plants yesterday where they leave thousands of seeds, prickly seeds, stuck to your clothing. It's easy to seed now why this type of rock would collapse so easily. It's all shale. All it takes is some water to get in there, expand, and it collapses or just simply the stress of going out of the water back in a couple times. And here we are above the railroad tunnel now, making our way down. These rocks are very nice to look at. Nice orange color in the distance. Some parts of the lake look completely orange. There's a good variety of colors here. The ones here are mostly gray, but we'll see some pretty exciting parts. We got someone else's campfire right here. Dug a nice big hole for it. So it's probably not visible from the road. This area, fires are just banned. Can't even use charcoal or anything, but that's completely understandable. What you're seeing now, this forest, this is the best looking forest around here. It's very hard to find forest in California that's not dead or killed by wildfires. We're gonna go take a look at this bridge over here, which is actually extremely awesome. There's only a little bit of water flowing down here, but if you look at this bridge, which was built well before the reservoir, they had to add a bridge deck on top of a bridge deck because it was about 10 feet too short and it would have been underwater. Why didn't they just fill it 10 feet less? Because 10 feet is a lot of acre feet. A lot of capacity would be lost. Such a tiny trickle. So I was told today that anything I want to film down here, I better do it this year because with better water management, the reservoir might not be this low again. It's not going to be as low as it was last year because of better water management. And that's why some of the tunnels we're going to go look at, they're not completely out of the water and they likely won't be again like last year. Look at this, whole bunch of docks around here. Here's the anchor for the dock. Yep, abandoned docks because the water is so low. See that beautiful arch bridge? When that was built, it stood tall and proud like it is now. But on a normal year with this thing full, you would never know that arch is there. Here's a dock pulled out of the water. More docks. Well, they weren't pulled out of the water technically. The water pulled out from under it. Now we gotta walk down this steep slope right up there and up to the top. Then I'll walk the road back to where I'm parked down here. Look at this. There's no trespassing signs and even a gate so you can't walk out onto the deck without getting wet. I don't think that applies anymore. No one's storing their boats anymore. So what is this? Tire is supposed to be an anchor? It feels very heavy like there's concrete in it. 
I'm just seeing styrofoam. I see a barrel down there filled with concrete used as an anchor. By the looks of it, these boat docks have been out of the water a long time. The decking is even starting to deteriorate. But notice all the plants and weeds, they're still pretty green down there right against the trickle. I'm hoping we can walk onto the abandoned deck. I don't know if that's possible or not. If you notice those ropes hanging from the bridge, my guess would be that was a rope swing when there was a good amount of water still under here. So, when I drove in, there's like a little parking area before we drove down into the reservoir. And it looks like a trail that they probably built to get down to those boat docks. That was quite the hike up here. It's so dry, the ground isn't holding itself together. Really hard to walk up. Now look at this bridge, isn't that cool? They built this wooden deck bridge, maybe 10, 12 feet above the old deck. Isn't that awesome? And it says it was built in 1925. Beautiful bridge. Still in beautiful shape. But I don't see an easy way to get on there. The way to get on there would be dangerously walking here along this ledge. We're going to get up there on that bridge. See if there's any other way. Yeah, that's not a safe way in there. And I know that was done intentionally, so you won't be going in there. Charlie Creek Bridge. Let's look down on the other side. Not an easy way to get in there. Wow, driving over this, you would never know there's wooden timbers underneath this asphalt. But a big tanker truck just went by me. This thing, it vibrates really heavily with that truck. Notice how the vegetation, it's only growing down there right next to the creek. It's like a tiny oasis for little creatures. Made it to the other side of the bridge. I love how Shasta Lake has so many of these dirt roads. You can just take your vehicle off-road. I love that. Once again, not an easy way down. That's quite the fall. Yeah, I'm not taking this risk against that flat wall to try to crawl in that little two-foot gap. But the main reason I want to go in there, I just want to see if there's any type of, no, you know, like remnants of the divide or anything. All right, everyone, I have my tripod extended all the way. And I'm going to lower you down into the lower deck of the bridge. What do you see down there? Anything interesting? All right, we got to see in there. Wasn't too exciting. Just some graffiti, a bunch of natural build up in the corners and the edges of the road. That's about it. Just covered by debris, the old roadway. Not even as much as I would have thought, because think about it. When the water goes in there, it's got to clean it off. All right. I'm lowering you down once again opposite side of the bridge what do we see I definitely see some utilities maybe fiber optic or something right there on the edge I can't really see in there but just from hanging over the edge of the bridge I could see there's a lot more debris covering the old bridge deck on this side so this is that road I turned into. 
very bumpy one. I can see a couple of spots where somebody with a low bumper would definitely hit. Like this, it's a good eight inches. There was a couple good rocks sticking out of the ground. All right, so this is that parking lot for that boat dock when it used to be usable. And over here is a dirt road I took. Check out all that shale rock. This would be a great place to go rock skipping. It's so dry here, I've never seen dust kick up just by running by like that. I've never seen a place this dry. There's inches of this really fluffy dust. Look at that. It just gets blasted in every direction just by walking on it. You don't even have to do it that hard. But if you kick, boom. Alrighty everyone, we're going back up the hill. We're coming out this other way. It's not the way we came. Big rock in the road. Pretty bumpy. Making a lot of dust cloud. This is a very steep one. Also, check out this satellite image here of where the train tunnel is. And that boat dock over there, it's in use just a couple years ago. I thought that was pretty cool to see. I gotta go carefully here, I don't wanna bottom out. There's a very tall rock. There we go. Check this out everyone, on a normal year, the water would be just a few feet below this road. All right, everyone, right now we're driving down to the lake. Very bumpy road. I'm gonna have to turn around here. All right, everyone, we just pulled up to the old Highway 99 bridge. The bridge does not go all the way across anymore. They cut off the other end of it. You can't see that now. The water's a little bit too high. Just look at the satellite map where I am. It's saying I'm in the middle of the lake. We're supposed to be way underwater. This thing still looks really strong, but I'm not going to drive onto it. Looks like it's in real good shape. Even being abandoned this long. 
can see where they cut off all the railings on the bridge. From satellite maps, it just looks like a big boat ramp, which is basically what people are using it for at the moment. We cannot see the end of the bridge, but it does not go all the way across like it used to anymore. Can you even see what the line on it still? Here's a big egg sack of something. Can't see the bottom here. Still looks like it's really deep. Lots of bubbles coming up. Probably fish stirring around the bottom looking for food. Releasing a bunch of methane bubbles that are just stuck in the sediment. Here's a good view of it. Usually completely underwater. All right, I was back down to the bridge a little bit after I turned around just to show you the carve out they have here. They had to tear down this little part of the hill. You see one lane of it completely caved in. The road is all messed up. So bumpy. Let's look at the size of some of these potholes. All this is typically underwater. All this asphalt. And look at this. They even put culvert pipes in here. Just so people could drive around. During these low times. Everywhere here is usually underwater. And people use this as a boat ramp. So it's a good idea they're still doing maintenance on it. No matter how low it is, you can still get to the water. We're still not out of it yet. Somewhere around here is the water's capacity. Yeah, it does not get this high. Oh yeah, it does actually. Yep, to my left. The bank up against those trees, even right here, when it's at capacity, can get underwater. Right up to the edge of these signs, but it looks like by the way they have all these signs set up, they don't expect it to be up there for a long time. This is a very, very rough road. We're going down to try to find Abandoned tunnel number five. This area is pretty awesome. Look at all this bright orange gravel. Bunch of camping sites. They see a bunch of fire pits. You're not allowed to do it now, but it says camping is allowed up to 14 days. We're driving around because is supposed to be here somewhere. Just looking for a feasible road option. I think I might have to go on foot. Look at all these erosion channels in the lake bed. This area looks pretty awesome. The whole area is bright orange. Over here, the cliff is gray, nice green water. All right, everyone, we just found tunnel number five. It is not out of the water, but we can see where the tunnel is right there if this was to drop just a couple more feet we would see it and that right there is a railroad trussle just slightly below the water
that probably will not be out of the water this year, maybe never again. Since the 1940s, it has not seen the light of day except for last year. Only year it ever made it completely out of the water. It's been out on numerous years, enough to kayak through it, but not enough to go in on foot. So that means probably at least 20 feet below the water here would be the shelf where the railroad used to be. Let's go a little bit closer. All right, so this looks like the best view we're gonna be getting. You can see where the tunnel goes into the hill. It's about to come out. Maybe in a few weeks a kayak would be able to fit through there. But if it ever completely comes out of the water again, I'll definitely make a point of coming out here. Now we gotta find our way back up to the top. Lots and lots of very jagged shale rock going up this hill. And burnt timbers, burnt tree stumps, all that kind of stuff. So there's that railroad tunnel and trestle we were just at. This is a view from the road. Goes through here. And there's another tunnel after it. And then another. We have just left the pavement and it looks like the rest of the ride is gonna be on this nice orange road. We also passed by a sign saying there could be washouts and landslides because we're going to be approaching a burned area after a forest fire. We just went through a darker area of the forest and there's actually water trickling through these culvert pipes. The forest doesn't seem that bad around this side. Take a look at this large rock that rolled down the hill. Right now we're up pretty high. There's a really big drop on the left side of the road. And we're climbing an elevation very fast. This road has a lot of erosion problems. Bet it would get pretty muddy up here if it was raining. This is a very treacherous road. I really hope no one else comes because I'm gonna have to back up really far around these tight corners. I only have a mile to go. At least it's not a muddy mess. No concerns yet. There was one spot back there to turn around, but that, that's a good five minutes of backing up. It's really not a bad road. It's just very scary. This road is called Shasta Trinity Narrow, something like that. Wow, it's like a racetrack going around this corner. It's an exciting road, but really nowhere to pass anybody.
big bump tree cut out of the way. definitely tell there was forest fires here. You see how the bases of all the trees are burned, but it wasn't a giant fire. It didn't have enough heat to kill most of them. Because a lot of times a forest fire comes through, it'll girdle all the trees, and then they die. But they never actually caught fire. It's just the debris on the ground and grass is what heats up enough to get some of them starting to die girdling. It's a very interesting road, and I imagine at the end of it, I will have a place to turn around. Alright, there's good spots here to pull over someone could pass, although they would be the one pulling over. When you're driving this type of road, always the person close to the edge is the one that stops, so there's less chance of an accident of falling off. So I'm the one who would keep moving if there is a spot for them to pull over. Very narrow again. It's only like two feet beyond where the wheel is before a giant drop hundreds of feet. At least there are some spots to turn around. It's gonna be a scary place to back up. I haven't been doing good maintenance. That culvert pipe there is completely filled in, also completely rusted out. This is definitely the top road scariest if somebody else were to come. But so far zero concern of getting stuck. out to the end of this giant peninsula. Here's a good spot to turn around also. Beautiful view. Another scary blind switchback. I doubt anyone would be speeding out here. I just stopped here briefly. Look at this beautiful view. This is the peninsula here where that train tunnel underwater goes through. And there's supposedly another tunnel here. That's why we're coming down here to try to find that. You see where that guy's camping? That's where I was just parked when I walked down to the tunnel. All right, there's no more cliff. This is a little sketchy. This is very steep going down. Not gonna be a problem getting up though. This is where we're gonna stop. On a good year where a lot of rainfall, where I am right now, would be right up against the water. Maybe even slightly in it. I can even see little pine trees growing here. Been in a drought for such a long time, this area. This is someone's beautiful campsite. This would not be a bad place at all to camp. You are allowed to camp here. See, they got that nice big fire pit there. No fires this year, but camping is allowed. Just can't be burning anything. Wow, what a road. Now we're gonna go over here to the water and see if there's any type of tunnel sticking out. Because now that we're this far, we should be up to tunnel number three. Or the third tunnel. It's not actually tunnel number three. All I know is the first one we saw was tunnel number five. 
So that would be tunnel number. Yeah, this would be tunnel number three, actually. Probably not visible, but I'm hoping we'll be able to see it slightly under. Lots of fishermen out today. So I'm guessing that might be where it is. You see the discoloration in the water? That might be the old railroad bed. Let's look around a little more. You see this thing here? This is a buoy, so your boat doesn't bottom out here. Sometimes this buoy is far below the water. That's just so when the water gets here, you know you don't hit it. But some years where I'm standing, this thing could be even 10 feet underwater by the looks of it from here. Yep, there's buoys just like the, this one here, here. You saw them, they were all over the top of that train trussle. Any unusual obstruction has them. There's one down here at the end of this peninsula for when it first starts coming out of the water. No one bottoms out and ruins a boat. So I think we're going to go down here all the way to the end and look for any kind of remnants of a tunnel. All these tunnels out here are very small. They're not very long. It's just like the one we were able to walk through. But as this railroad goes, it's losing elevation. But water's flat, so that means each one would be deeper and deeper, less and less likely to ever come out of the water again. Oh, this is another campsite. The shale rock around here is so beautiful. So many layers. And as you see, it's not very structural. I'm thinking that might be a railroad shelf. Possibly. Water is much too deep to be able to tell where the tunnel would be. I'm going to walk all the way down there though. Boat just made a lot of waves. From down here I really can't see what I was looking at. Water is definitely too deep for any of these tunnels. Because like I said, every tunnel gets deeper and deeper as the rail bed slowly loses elevation. So if the one with the trussle that's easily accessible isn't out of the water, these aren't going to be. That's a little un un unfortunate because we've been wanting to come out here for a while. At least we got to see tunnel number six and part of tunnel number five. But with these droughts becoming more consistent, they plan on doing a lot better water management, a lot more restrictions, making it so you can't water your lawn, and other unnecessary things. If lawn can't naturally grow, I don't know why people were growing it in some of these places. All right, making our way back up. Then we'll get on that treacherous road again. These rigid rocks are so beautiful. I would not want to find out how this feels to be barefoot or trip. Although at home I do walk around barefoot most of the time, especially on the gravel driveway. I've always been told that people who don't wear shoes their whole life, when they're at home, they often have way better balance when they become older. They have better feel and function in their feet and much tougher feet for walking on stuff. Here we go. Back on out of here.
very bumpy and rocky road. When I say rocky, I mean it. You're rocking back and forth, but it's also rocky. That's just another campsite right there. Got a lot of blind corners. I gotta be careful around. It doesn't look like people come down here often, thankfully. There's a lot of rocks in the road that have fallen off this cliff. To my right side, there's probably a three, four hundred foot drop. These pine cones are huge. You see that everyone up there on the shelf? That's the road we came in on before we turned onto this. We're probably a good 300 feet at least from the start of the reservoir. The water down there, that's probably 500 feet in elevation, maybe more. We're really high up. Now we're gonna start moving again. Let's see how the bases of these trees are burnt. But a good amount of them survived. The fire wasn't that hot. You know, maybe singed is another word. It's probably just smoke residue on a lot of these trees. Because most of them survived. There's a bunch of erosion and rocks that fell in the road. I bet that whole tree is going to be down here pretty soon. This has been such a dry year around here. There's fires everywhere, but yet this part of the road still has bright green grass and groundwater. Imagine how much this groundwater must be trickling on a normal rainfall year. All right, everyone, we just continued down this road. We're on our way back now. It ends up being a dead end, but this road is also pretty scary with a big cliff on the side of it for the majority of the trip. This is further on that peninsula road that I went down, which was really tight. It eventually fizz fizzles out. It's just a bunch of campsites. Nothing else is going to be down here. It doesn't even follow the Shasta Lake anymore, so that peninsula road is the last place to see it but we got to the location of the train tunnels and that's all we're going to be able to see this year so that's the road we did earlier and this is the way back There's a bear. There's a bear. I just got out and I don't see the bear, but I can hear it running. I wonder if the bear slipped and fell or anything. This is so steep. I don't know how the bear got down there so fast. I'm going to show a few of the culverts around here at Shasta Lake. We just saw a bear in the road. It ran away real fast. That was about a mile back. Hopefully we won't be hearing from that bear. This culvert's a lot bigger than it looked from the road. I can tell that this thing hasn't ran all year. But when it did run last, it was powerful, sending rocks through the pipe. Been a very dry year. 
dry as a bone. You can see all the galvanization is completely worn down. It's no longer shiny. It hasn't ran in a while. Woo! It's scary in here. And here's where we come out. Look at all that debris. And this is Shasta Lake. Believe it or not, this culvert is supposed to be underwater. And that other side, that whole gully is supposed to be filled up. You're not even supposed to know the pipe is there. It's been years since the water's been here though. Ooh. Scared away some birds. And we got a heavily traveled animal trail right there. You can see the water's used to being up there near those trees. Here's another culvert, slightly smaller. We'll go check this one out. These culverts are all around this area, but it's top priority making sure they don't plug up. So it's highly unlikely we'd find one they overlooked. Unless we were here during the storm, while it's getting blocked. During a flash flood, maybe. Yep, that's all clear. All the way through. Massive pine cones. Let's step up here. Into this pipe. And let's run through it. dry around here not even spider friends because without water their food the flies and the mosquitoes aren't reproducing I'm not sure but technically water might be able to back up into here also First culvert, yes. This one, probably no water would back up into it. All right, we got a culvert pipe here. We have another big one right here. And this one definitely does not back up. But I believe the water does come up to it. Probably not putting it under water, but up to it. Take a look at this beautiful scene with the mountains, the marina, all the bright orange banks of dried up Lake Shasta, nice shadows of the trees. They had to build this whole road going down there because the lake is so low. Check out all these houseboats here that were pulled out of the water. Now we're gonna see if we can drive down there to those docks. I can't imagine how it must be for the people who live around here. All these houses used to be right up on the water. Just look at the area here. This building was right on the water. You can see the water lines. Just reading these signs, it just says to watch out for boaters. 
for like debris and stuff that might be in there. So there's no sign saying we can't come down here. It just says no public launching. This is a really cool road. So it looks like this is the old boat ramp and here's the end of it where it turns to dirt. I bet when they poured that concrete, they never could have imagined it would be this low. Can't even see the water yet. And you see they put up handicapped parking signs. They've even put culverts on this road. It shows they're ready for the long term of it being low. That erosion right in front of us kind of looks cool. Going down that hill. or something. Got a big gas powered water pump. Very low water levels. Wow, this bright orange sand and rock looks so awesome, especially with the sun hitting it. Here's the way down. I'm not gonna go any further. But this is where you'd have to go to launch the boats. This is not a good road at all going down there. Must be pretty scary launching off of that. It's very steep. You could easily lose traction, especially pulling a big boat out of the water. I wanna show you some of the houseboats out here. I'm gonna stop for a brief moment. Got a big diesel generator running. So many houseboats. Really low water levels. So this looks like where you'd launch the boat possibly. Over there also looked like another launching point. So this is almost all houseboats. Looks really pretty. Let me show you around here. Such pretty red rock and soil. Most of this is probably just clay, not very structural. I don't think this is a road. I better not hang around here for long. It says no parking down here. No public boat launching. Nothing says I couldn't drive down here, but I'm not gonna push my luck. This is sure a sight to see. It's kind of sad seeing water this low. It's 147 feet below capacity today. And this is the end of October 2022. I could tell by some of the plant growth, it's been years since it's been way up here. Look at that, there's even an old tree trunk probably cut down back when they made the reservoir deep underwater tree trunks survive a while the reason you're not seeing more the reason you're not seeing dirt is because waves bashing against the sides over years got rid of all the soil and it's probably at the bottom as silt but if this was to start rising tomorrow even if it was to completely fill up somehow in a day this whole marina would just float back up to the top 
and they'd probably pull it in closer where it's supposed to be. I hope this video of showing low water levels at Lake Shasta in Northern California was pretty interesting. Thanks for watching everyone. Have a great day. If you're noticing as I'm driving around here, there's a lot of these cables. That's to keep the docks from floating too far away, but I stopped right here to show you. Take a look at these stairs someone built to get down to the water. And the water's nowhere in sight anymore. This is Lake Shasta's Dam. We're about to go walk across this and see what the water level looks like on the other side. Those spillways haven't been running in a long time. This is the first time in probably a week that I've seen green grass. They got sprinklers running here around the dam. And these trees are incredibly healthy as a result. Most of the trees in the area aren't doing too well, but that's mostly because of wildfires. The majority of trees that haven't been singed by fires are alive and could quickly bounce back if there was a rainstorm. But most of the dead trees you see is because the forest floor was on fire, girdling them. So they're not coming back. This is really cool getting up close to the dam and the hydroelectric station. Right here, it's a much bigger area of the lake unless you look at the edges it looks like there's still a ton of water here the guy that just walked by said he used to fish off of this as a kid when it used to be up here because it looks like the typical water line is that really dirty one but it looks like maybe during storms it probably gets up a little higher when it's starting to spill See all the debris all around the edges from high water? Just gets dumped here, kind of trapped. Because unless it's spilling, it doesn't really have a way out. Looks like a railroad tie in there, mixed in with the bunch. It's starting to look really pretty out.
This dam is much bigger when you're walking across it than it looks from far away. Here's all the power lines going off to the cities. There's a whole bunch of bugs flying around me. It looks like this used to be an old water fountain a while back. Keep back 1,000 feet. That's for boats in the distance to see that massive sign. Can't even get near this thing. I'm imagining that's what that was. Look at that awesome ladder. Looks like they have a trash rack right here. And this whole system here to collect the debris out. Got a little bit of water coming out down there. This would be awesome to see this thing blasting. Let's see what it looks like across the road. Wow, look at those giant grates down there. There's so many of them. That's awesome to see too. Look at that old structure from back before they even built the dam. On a normal year, this is supposed to be completely underwater. It's so high up. I have to walk to the end here, even though I was only planning on walking into the center. Because I'm wondering what that thing at the end of the road is. I just see these giant tracks here, and it looks like something occasionally comes down here. There's a track on each side of the road, and I see a big structure up here, so I'm just curious. It looks like something comes across. It looks like that big thing is on tracks.